When I was looking at my YouTube analytics, I saw that a lot of my viewers actually come from the United States. And I thought, well, maybe it's a uh, good time to show you a camera that lots of you are unfamiliar with. The Practica. I'm sure the name was a dead giveaway, but Practica cameras are German, but not the BMW or Audi Germany. It's the GDR, Eastern Germany. Well, for those of you who were not born back in the day, back then Germany was split into two parts, Western Germany and Eastern Germany. And Practica, they come from the Eastern Bloc. It's probably the reason why they were not that popular in the US. When you talk about something made in Germany, you think about quality and reliability. Das, das Deutsche Qualität, they say. Well, the Practica was known for its cheapness. It was affordable. Although Practica cameras were cheap, they were not bad quality cameras. They had very good value for money. Just look at that. It's sharp. The lens on this one is a 50mm, 1.8, and it's good. I mean, What's wrong about this? Yes, I know, my shoes again. Well, obviously these cameras, they had issues. They were not so reliable. Some of them have problems. This one doesn't, it works fine. The only thing I had to do was to clean up the battery contact. And by the way, it uses the same battery as a Canon AE-1. So you won't have to worry about getting a battery for it. No mercury batteries, no nothing. It's just a PX28 and you're good to go. And plus, you can find them almost everywhere. This one is the Practica BCA. It's an aperture priority automatic camera, but you have uh, one over 60 for flash sync, bulb mode and, well, the check, the battery check mode. So it's pretty easy to use. Inside of your finder, you'll find a few LEDs. One of them indicates you that the camera is using a shutter speed between 1 over 1000 or 1 over 60, which means uh, no need to worry about camera shake. Another LED tells you that um, the shutter speed is between 1 over 30 and 1 second, so it means uh, use a tripod if you don't want to get blurry images, and a red LED tells you that there's a risk of underexposure. It's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. The focusing screen has a split image rangefinder to help you manual focus, and the split image is in diagonal. I mean, I only know about a few other camera makers that use this, and it's a damn good idea. The viewfinder is a little bit darker than what you'll find on Canon, Nikons, or Antexes. Not a big deal if you ask me. The only issue I see with this camera is it doesn't use a well-known lens mount. See, Practicas, they used M42 back in the day, but here they use a bayonet, and they didn't go for the K-mount, which is somehow almost universal. They use their own proprietary Practica bayonet. And uh, hmm, it's not that easy to find lenses compatible with this camera. If I had to compare Practica cameras to something well-known, I would say they're like root beer. Some people love them, some people despise them. And if I want to be honest with you guys, I think these cameras were very important for us. I mean, Europeans. You see, they were the first cameras people were able to afford. A camera was a, a very expensive item back in the day, and the Practica made it possible for students, youngsters, to get involved into photography with a high quality camera. The lens was very sharp and although the camera looked ancient and outdated in technology, it was working, it was doing its job. Just like Lada cars we had here in Europe, yeah, they were cheap, they were based on outdated 1960s technology, but they were driving you from point A to point B. And this camera, it does exactly that. It's useful to take good pictures of good quality, and you don't break the bank. So, the million dollar question is, should I get myself 
a practica camera to begin film photography. Well, don't do that for a good reason. When you find one that is in a working condition, it's an awesome camera, but lots of them, and I mean lots of them, have issues, reliability issues. And if you don't feel comfortable with a camera and you cannot spot when something is wrong, well, you're gonna lose money. And some people, they even try to sell these cameras for a hefty amount of cash. So I would say, get one once you know a thing or two about film photography and you'll be able to spot a camera that has a problem. If you find one that is perfectly working, man, this is an awesome camera with awesome results. And they're cool. I mean, yeah, they might look like they've been designed by someone who only had a ruler and an HB pencil, but they're cool. The cool factor is through the roof. So yeah, not a camera for someone who's beginning photography, but definitely a good choice if you found one that is still working. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video about the Practica. And uh, I'll see you next time. Be seeing you guys.